This is our fifth and likely final video in the series on using the Fused Provider Location API in Android to get latitude and longitude. In our last video, we used the Android Activity Lifecycle to connect, disconnect from the Google API client and then subscribe and unsubscribe from the GPS service. We also used the emulator and the uh, Android device monitor to be able to send GPS information that we're showing in a toast. Now, showing in a toast might not always be practical. We want to show this information in our latitude and longitude on screen. We also want to save it in a series of variables, uh, and those variables we can eventually persist to a data store. So this won't take a whole lot of work. I'm going to go back and uh, take a look at my development environment, Android Studio, and I'm going to look at the onLocationChanged method, and this is where I'm currently showing a toast but we know we don't want to bother the user with needless notifications. So what I will do is I'm going to say location dot get latitude, or we'll start with longitude, then control alt V, or actually, you know what, let me undo that. Let's do control alt F in Android Studio, which is going to assign this to a field. We want a field because a field means we can access this variable in any method within our class. And so if we want, we can persist the latitude and longitude to the database or to a file system later. So control alt F, I'll go ahead and accept its proposal and it will finish up that method call. You see what's happening? On location changed method is a callback method that gets called when our location changes. It passes in a location object. That location object is gonna contain a latitude and a longitude and we're simply gonna store those for later use. Location .get latitude is the other one, and uh, once again, mouse over and control alt f latitude is fine. We'll accept the default proposal. There's several other things that you can get here. Location, oops, dot .get cc, get accuracy, get altitude, get bearing, and uh, off screen a little bit, we have get speed, get time, uh, several other things that we can use. For our purpose, latitude and longitude will be fine. So uh, what I also want to do is I want to update my user interface. I'm saving it in a variable now, but I want to update the user interface so that I actually show the latitude and longitude on screen. Let's see if we're accessing those fields. Doesn't look like we are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the layout and this is where setting IDs on UI components is very important because we're going to want to program against these. So I click on latitude and I navigate over to see the ID. Of course, I could also go to the um, uh, XML under the cover if I want, but we see it's called LBL latitude value. And we can probably take a good guess on what the longitude ID is as well. Uh, we go down and whoops yeah it looks like one longitude lbl longitude value these are both text views take a look in the upper right here where you see text view so we're going to want to remember it's a text view i'll go ps a plan remember the on create method is where we initialize things so what i can do is say find view by id uh, android studio is kind enough to auto complete for me r dot id Remember I told you we, wanted, we want to remember uh, those IDs. So r.id.lbl longitude value. And I'm going to uh, control alt F to assign this to a field again. And we're gonna call it L longitude value. We don't have to name the method, the variable, the same name as the widget on the screen, but I like to do that just so I don't forget. Okay, uh, it saved it up above as a view. I'm gonna call that a text view. A text view is more specific than a view and will give us a few more methods that are specific to that text view. The only trick is now I have to come down to the assignment and I have to cast. If I went too fast on that one, don't worry, we'll do it again. Find view by ID, except this time it's gonna be for latitude. R.id.lbl latitude value. Terminate with a semicolon. Control Alt F, assigned to a field. 
give it a name we'll remember. LBL latitude value is fine with me. Enter. Okay. Uh, go up and change from the very general view to a more specific text view. Okay. And finally come down to that assignment again and Alt Enter will allow us to cast. So now I have programmatic access to latitude and longitude. I scroll down, back down to my on location changed, and I'm going to say LBL latitude value dot set text. Whoops, sorry. Okay. This is a little bit tricky because latitude and longitude return a double. I have to do a quick cast to turn that to a string. Or can dot value of, and I can pass in the uh, first one, and then I can say, I'm sorry double dot to string. Okay. Now, a note, if you're used to Java programming, you're probably used to a two string method that does not take an argument. Note that this one does take an argument. It's an overloaded method. In other words, it's a different it's a it's a method with the same name, different parameter list. And all it's doing is taking a double and naturally converting it to a string. It'll be a longitude value dot set text Again, this will seem kind of familiar. Double dot two string and the longitude variable that we shared and received up above. Save and debug, and then we'll switch again to um, the Android device monitor once it comes up in the debugger. I've removed the toast. Now, one note is that, uh, while this is loading, one note is that these variables will not persist if you change the orientation of the screen from uh, portrait to landscape or vice versa. I have a different video on that called, uh, I think, saving, changing, dealing with uh, landscape orientation changes or saving state between changes. You probably want to take a look at that if you're doing an exercise like this. Okay, uh, it will take just a moment to get this loaded. I'll pause the video and be back in just a moment. The application has loaded. I'm going to click on the Android device monitor. I'll give it just a second to switch that over. Once it loads, I pull it up from my start bar. I'll keep the emulator here so we can kind of keep an eye on it. Click on emulator control. And this will allow me to, I'll go ahead and send the default latitude and longitude. Now remember that our application is pulling only about once a minute, so it might take just a moment for the latitude and longitude to update on this screen. And sure enough, you see now, the latitude and the longitude have updated. I can, I'll go ahead and send in my um, 84, minus 84 and 39, so roughly where Cincinnati is, hit send. And in a few more moments, we'll see, we'll update again with the Cincinnati latitude and longitude that I've provided. And there we have it, the Cincinnati latitude and longitude has updated. Now you notice I have a pause GPS button here. Uh, that's something we could implement at a later time. Uh, but the idea with that, and you'll see this on the live Android app, the idea with that button is that sometimes I'll go up to a tree. I don't know what it is, and maybe it's a labeled specimen. I'll go up to the label, capture the tree information, but then I need to take a picture. And when I take a picture, I'm gonna walk back a significant distance if it's a large tree, it might be several meters, several feet that I have to walk back. And so what I'll do then in the pause GPS method is I will go back and I will effectively uh, treat it, whoops, sorry, I will effectively treat it uh, just as our on pause method does here and I'll simply say, okay, we'll remove the edge for a moment and then when I click that button again, it's gonna act like on resume. So we let that button toggle back and forth between on pause and on resume. So perhaps we'll take a look at that in a future video. But for the moment, we're all set with this video. Uh, thank you for staying tuned to the sequence, and there's certainly more videos to come. I appreciate, as always, your likes, your comments, and your sub suggestions. Thank you.